We're live, I think. I got to go live and see. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to and, and that's, that's the kind of guy we serve. The hour has come. We are ready tonight to share our testimonies on tonight and to see how you guys are doing. Please, please come on in, like and share the video. Someone who you think could benefit from hearing about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. As you can see, we're playing You're So Am You're Amazing. God is truly, truly, truly amazing. He healed the sick. He healed the dead. He's Lord of all. He's the great I am. God is so good. Yes. The stars and the moons, he calls it to shine. We're just so grateful for God on tonight. Amazing. We hope you, um, you're able to... Um, Everyone is able to join us on tonight. We have a very special guest we're expecting. And by the way, I'm John Duff, and this is Lydia. <laughs> we're excited that you guys are joining us tonight. You are going to love it tonight. If you thought you were amazed by the things that God does, I cannot wait until you hear yes. the money tonight. And we all have a testimony. We all have something to share about the goodness of God because it's in him that we live and we move and we have our being. So the fact that we're even breathing this very moment is a testimony. Yeah. So we'll give you guys a few minutes to get in. We see a few of you guys are watching and popping on. Say, hey, y'all. <laughs> Let so us know when you come on, say, hey. Let us know. So I, we're going to be monitoring the live because we're in Zoom. So we got to be able to see each other. And then we're going to be monitoring the live from my cell phone. So we can see when you guys are commenting or when you're coming on and what you're saying and everything. It's going to be a delay for us. So just work with us. We're it's something for us to get used to. Yes. This technology thing is quite different. <laughs> yes, quite different. Quite interesting. <laughs> but it's good stuff. It's really good stuff. The ways the Lord has made for us to be able to do this, you know. You, I don't know if you remember, just side tangent while we're waiting for people to come on. Hey, Rhea. Um, you remember years ago how every other prophet kept telling every other preacher they were going to go global? <laughs> yeah. Guess what? We all global. <laughs> we are all a global prophet or preacher or... Yeah, oh, my gosh. Witness. Isn't it amazing? We're all global. And, that, you know, everyone would get so excited. Oh, I'm going to be global. Oh, I'm going to be worldwide. Oh, I'm going to be in... And, this is your platform to be worldwide and global. So it wasn't that they weren't saying something that wasn't true. It just didn't happen the way I think a lot of people thought it was. I right. think back then we didn't have the, not that we didn't know about the internet, but we just didn't see that far into the future. So we were thinking jets and flying all over the world and here and there. And um, it didn't happen that way. We're actually global from my kitchen. John's kitchen, dining room, <laughs> dining room. We are global from wherever we are because God allowed this platform. He knew that we were going to need this platform. Yes. And let me tell you, he worked it all. Oh my goodness. I can't wait till we start sharing. Woo child. Man. Mm. Man. Thanks so crazy. She, said we, she said we both look beautiful. Thank you to Rhea. We appreciate Rhea, it. you're always beautiful, dear. So <laughs> that's, that's a truth. That is makes my heart feel so much joy coming from you. She knows true beauty. <laughs> yeah. Takes one to know one. Mm. Oh. <laughs> okay. First Lady White, Co-Pastor Lorraine White is on. Oh, hi, Co-Pastor White. 
Hi. We're just going to wait a few minutes before we really, really get started. Just allow some people to come on. We invited a lot of folks to come. And a lot of folks said that they were going to join the live on tonight. So hopefully they remembered. But there's always a playback. But we want you to have the live experience, though. We want you to interact with us. And, um, you know, we want to see the comments. So we want we just want you to hear. Man, I'm telling you, we got some good stuff to tell you on tonight. We got some good stuff to tell you. For yes, real. we do. We do. In spite of everything that's going on, God is still moving. He's still amazing. He yes, is he is. So wonderful. Like we just cannot fathom how great God is and just how how amazing that he's just mm, showing himself. Man, man, it's crazy. It if really you don't is. know, I'm just saying, if you don't know, I'm just saying, get to know. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah, good to know him. Hey, Miss Pam. I see Miss Pam is on. I, okay, so we, oh, there she is. Okay, you're a little faster than me this time. Really? See, that's backwards. Yes. A while ago, I couldn't see anybody. I know, and now, like, you're saying, hey, and I'm like, wait, I can't see you all here. <laughs> Sorry, she come. I see, hey, Miss Pam. I see you, girl. Between <laughs> the both of us, we're going to catch whoever comes on yes we will yes. catch so as you it join is crazy. Yes. Say, hey. who do you see now no i'm just saying how crazy oh. this is that you're in your spot i'm in my spot we are obeying the the laws of the land and the powers that be that tell us we must stay in place and stay at home and we're honoring mm -hmm. that so god but god still you made a way me. Hmm. It still made a way for us to be together and we're standing here only because he made way. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, I, hi, BB. BB Coast. If you see that name, that's Trey Johnson's aunt. Oh, remember Trey? Our my son, quote unquote son Trey. That's his auntie. That's yeah. just okay. Thank well, you for joining us. And our guest is going to be joining us soon. She's going to pop on. Yeah. So Minister Janae Fontaine will be coming on and we're going to do our opening. We're going to go ahead on and get started. We'll give her bio and introduction and hey, cuz, hey, Stacy. Um, we'll do her bio and intro, but we're going to start with prayer. We're going to do our scripture, y'all. We want you to know. Oh, here she is. I think she's popping on now. now. So we're excited about that. <laughs> No, you sing, Miss Pam. You got the voice, ma'am. For real. Oh, honey. You sing, uh. honey. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Pam, we're gonna have to bring you on here one night. One She's of our gonna have to be a guest. Yes, she could be a guest. Sure can. Yes, yes. We have, hey, if you got a testimony you want to give, just come on. Let us, let us know. Let us just know. Inbox us, go to the page, inbox so you can inbox me, you can inbox Lydia. Let us know and we'll we'll work it out. Hey, we 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 we're becoming more tech savvy now. So we might be able to just like let's do it. You ain't gotta leave your home. We can just That's bring you right. in. How convenient <laughs> is that? So we're gonna ask John to go pray this week for us, and then I'll give us our yeah. theme scripture. And then we're gonna introduce our guest and give her bio, and then we are gonna share yeah. a little bit. We're gonna share our testimony a little bit, give her bio. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll give a little bit of our testimony. We'll share her bio and then we'll bring her in. What she said. <laughs> she lets me have control sometimes, guys, but it don't. It don't always work like that. <laughs> just joking, just joking. <laughs> we work together. We work very, very well together. Very we well together. All right, so we're going to pray and then yes. Elder Filet is going to, I mean, well, she's Elder Filet, by the way. I'm she's Elder White. Elder White. You can just say John and Lydia. We don't have to, we're not. We're not hung up. Oh, All this caught up. <laughs> no. God knows us by our name. John, Lydia, Pamela. He knows my name. Yep. Whoever else. He knows our name. He mm -hmm. only he don't care about titles. So we don't care about titles. Okay? No. All right. Okay. Sometimes we'll be know in, in a proper place when you go to church and you're introducing, you, you know, you want to be obedient and follow the protocol. But protocol. You know, we won't get offended if you don't say it. Not at all. All right, I'm gonna pray. Okay. All right, Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, Father.
we come before you once again, God, first and foremost, just to say thank you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. We praise you, God. You're so awesome. God, we thank you for this moment, oh God, this opportunity that you have given us, this platform that you have given us, oh God, to share of your goodness, oh God, and to speak and encourage your people. Father, we thank you for all the struggles we had to go through, God, to get to this place. God, all the technical difficulties, God, that we had, we thank you and praise you, oh God, that we made it through, oh God, we made it over. And God, we are now here, God. And we ask you, oh God, to forgive us first and foremost of all of our sins. Move everything out of the way, every hindering spirit, oh God, that will come against this live one tonight, oh God, that will come against us telling of your goodness. God, we come against any technical difficulties, oh God. We pray that everything will run smoothly. God, we pray for all those that may be joining in, oh God, every listening ear, that they will be encouraged in some way, oh God. And Father, perhaps there's someone who doesn't know you that's listening in on tonight, we pray, oh God, that it's something that we say, oh God, that would draw them to you, Lord. We ask you to have your way on tonight. We give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And our theme scripture always comes from Psalms 105 and 1, and I'm going to say it from the New Living Translation. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done and yeah. that's the purpose of our um this live is that's the kind of god we serve we want the world to know we serve a great and mighty mighty and awesome and amazing and powerful god you can keep going on and on and on and on and you will never exhaust how amazing the god that we serve yes is. yes all right Amen. Amen. So That's as we funny. said, uh, we're going to start with a couple of testimonies of our own. I'm, I'm about to bust, so I just want to go ahead and just... <laughs> I am just like, oh, I'm about to bust at this thing. So can I go first? Go first, honey. I know you've been waiting on this. <laughs> so um, on last Saturday, my older sister uh vicky davis v well some of them know as vicky brown but she's vicky davis she's married um she suffered a massive stroke um it was after midnight um about one o'clock in the morning and we got the call that she had a stroke and she was rushed to riverside shore memorial well when they got her there they said it was nothing they could do because she was on blood thinners and they had to sedate her putting her in a medically induced coma sent her over to um, Riverside and Newport News. And when the doctors called my niece, her daughter told her that half of her brain was dead, half of the left side of her brain was dead. And it was really nothing that they could do. And it was a possibility that she was not gonna make it. And when you talk about something devastating, something heart-wrenching, something mind-blowing, um, and you're pretty much helpless because of the pandemic. We could not go to the hospital. She hasn't, we can't see her, she can't see us. And it's just been so heart-wrenching. And then they told her that she was gonna have brain swelling and they just had to monitor her. There's nothing they could do. They couldn't even move the blood clot. It was nothing that they could do. And so we went into prayer mode. I text all of my fam living word family, all of my family, close relatives and say, hey, this is what's going on. Y'all gotta pray. So guys, saints, people of God, people who are not of God, people, God is a prayer answering God. Do you hear me? He answered our prayer. Every time she would tell us something, we said, okay, this is what's going on. We're going to pray against that. So they called her and said that the brain swelling was reaching its peak. And if it got any worse, that she was going to have to go in surgery and they were going to remove part of her skull to take the pressure off, but it was going to save her life, but she was going to, you know, she wasn't going to be able to understand anything or anybody. She wasn't going to be able to talk. She had no use of her right side. Mm. Okay. So we prayed against that. We got the phone call. Well, they didn't, they didn't call her, but they didn't need to call her because the swelling had went down the very next day. <laughs> the swelling went down the very next day. And then, so um, we came, we started praying about her being able to move and her being able to be verbal, her being able to just understand who we are, you know, her family, remember who she is, where she's at. And each time we prayed, God answered. So one day my niece called and they said, oh, she moved her right side a little bit. Now this is coming from, she ain't gonna make it to now she's moving her right side a little bit. Okay. 
So it just goes, it just gets better and better. <laughs> so then we started praying again. And then she gets, she calls back and they said, oh, she knows who she is. She knows the day of birth. She knows where she at. They told her your name that you called and she smiled a little bit. This is some, This is coming from, she is not going to be coherent. She's not going to understand no logic. Do you hear me? Do you, do you see what God is doing and has done? And so we still kept praying. And then um, they said that we could call her and speak to her, but she could not talk. She's not verbalized what they said, right? So we was like, well, we just wanted her to hear our voice. We just want her to know that we care about her and we love her. So they let us call and they said they could put the phone to her ear and we could talk to her, but she couldn't speak back. But that's what they said. And so when they put the phone to her ear, it was very faint, but we was like, hey, sister, hey, we love you. And she was like, hey, very faint, but she said, hey. And then we told her why we couldn't be there. She said, we know why we can't be there because of the virus. You know, we'd be, and she was like, okay, okay. So I'm telling you guys, God is amazing in the midst of everything that is going, what seems to be a devastating, and it's still devastating because she's not a hundred percent, but she's progressing beyond what they said that she could do. She's speaking. Do you hear me? Very faint. Yes, not with the ideal conversation, but she was able to formulate three words, well, two words, three times. Hey, okay, okay. So when I say, when man says no, God says yes. Yes. When, when, <laughs> when Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, we are trusting and believing for a 100% complete full recovery for my sister. I ask you all to keep her in prayer, keep her children in prayer because and her grandchildren, because I know they miss their mom mom and they can't see her and they can't, you know, put their hands on it. We want to we, but we're asking, we know that Jesus is there with her. We know that Jesus is wrapping his arms yes. around her and comforting her and ministering to her. So we're just elated about what God is doing. And as the test, as the, the progress goes, I'm just going to keep everybody informed of what's going on with her because we're going to watch a miracle. Oh, I just believe that God is a miracle. And she's already a miracle. She's beyond what they said she could do. They told her, her daughter today that according to the master stroke that she had, she's progressing way more than what they thought she would. So of course, because God is in it, because we're praying and the prayers of the righteous avail as much. So we just ask everybody to keep her in prayer. That's my testimony for the week. And I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to let my, my counterpart give her testimony. But I just want you to let you know how good God is and what he's able to do and how amazing he is. Amen. Amen. That I'm telling you that God, nobody but the Lord, nobody but the Lord could do go from, we don't know if she's going to make it to, Everything that they're saying, oh, we don't know, but God knows. It's awesome. Yes. My testimony just kind of filters around all of this because anytime God places something on your heart, just know you're going to fight. <laughs> just prepare for the struggle. So oh, yes. we went from um, using a platform and having, you know, okay, we can only have a limited amount of people and then we can only have it for a limited amount of time. And we're like, okay, well, we knew we needed to make an investment, small investment, um, yes. <laughs> but an investment nonetheless, um, to increase the amount of time that we will have. Cause we know we get to talking about the Lord, you know, things get a little, I see, and we'd be going on and on because we can't exhaust how good God is. Um, right. So we went from that. So then we we had to do that. That was one thing. And then it was like, okay, how do we make it work? So we had a test run. We made the software work. So we got that to work, and it was like, okay. Then it came to how are we going to post this on Facebook because we knew it could be done, which is why we made the investment. And it wouldn't work with my laptop. We couldn't do it on our phones. I couldn't do it with my work laptop. <laughs> we couldn't do it, you know, with Jonda's lap um, and where she is because of um, the signal and everything there. And I've traveled. So I'm on a 14 day quarantine. I'm on day two of a 14 day quarantine. I, per Governor Larry Hogan, cannot leave my home for 12 more days. <laughs> so I could not get to um, a laptop that I could use 
because there was no other platform and it just felt like it was a brick wall it was a brick wall it was a brick wall we take two steps and then we hit a wall and then that wall god would allow that wall to come down and then we hit another wall and then it was like well we could try youtube so we went and tried youtube and then <laughs> it was just so many things that happened but the lord worked it out oh i am using john's laptop got to me without me leaving my home <laughs> <laughs> and we yes. made it yes. work it was such a struggle but you know what i want to encourage you in the struggle that when you go through things that are hard it seems like how am i going to get over this i mean what next it makes you appreciate when you come out so much more when you struggle and you struggle and you struggle when things are handed to you it's yay good great all right and how soon the kids on christmas morning after opening those gifts toss those gifts to the side. Wow. So we are very similar. And you know what God can give us this, I mean, I can tell you countless number, I don't see them no more, but the refund checks, then how soon they're gone um, mm -hmm. without knowledge and understanding about budgeting and saving and things like that. I don't know if you caught last one, but that's a little bit of my passion there. Um, yeah but you appreciate the coming out so much more you appreciate the gift so much more so when i tell you we're running on to see what the end is going to be because it has been such a one hurdle after another after another i was so giddy and so excited hey mommy i was so giddy and excited um to be on here because it was such a push such a push so just remember keep pushing don't yes. stop praying the lord is not don't stop praying he'll get your cry the Lord yes. has promised his word is true. Don't stop praying. He'll answer you. That goes way back. Oh, God. Remember that. Yes. Um, but yes, so we struggled, but I'm telling you, God made a way. God made this happen. So, and we had to have this happen because we needed you guys to hear this testimony that, that you're going to hear from Minister Janae Fontaine, whom we're going to introduce right now. Okay. So let me read, let me read um, her bio real quick, and then we're going to bring her on. So uh, Janae Fontaine is a Maryland native born and raised on Maryland's Eastern shore. She works as an accounting associate at the nonprofit foundation of a local university, where she is also working toward her master's of business administration. Her talents flow across multiple lines of industry as she also has a passion for fashion, yes. baking, cooking, and personal shopping. In addition to these passions, this multifaceted gem has been using her talents and abilities to sing and serve the kingdom of God in a local ministry for more, for more, for almost 20 years. So awesome introduction for an awesome woman of God. So we introduce everyone to Minister Janae Fontaine of Salisbury, Maryland. And she's going to be joining us in a second. Hi. Welcome, Janae. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Industrial yeah, Color God we serve. Welcome. We're so Thank excited you to have you. Um, this is freaking me out a little bit because you know how you always look in one direction, you know, I'm on a phone, so I'm looking at you, but you know, the camera's somewhere else. So, you know, I'm kind of looking a little cockeyed right now, but that's all right too. <laughs> all right. I get it. I get it. I get it because it's such a delay. So Lydia, can you see Janae on the live on your phone? Because I don't see her on the live on my phone. I do see her on the live on my phone. Okay, good. As long as you can see her, because you know my internet connection and stuff is kind of wonky here. So she's on. She's live. She's on. Awesome. Okay, so Janae, uh, Lydia's going to start with the questions, and you're going to give you the floor, the plat, what, what, the, 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 the screen. I don't know. We're going to give it to you. <laughs> right. Yeah, not necessarily the floor, but still, same concept. Yeah. So what we want to start off with, with one, all of our guests is to, um, because this is a Christian platform and we believe in the power of God through an individual life. And so our first question is going, which is going to be to all of our guests is, what was the defining moment that happened in your life that drew you to Christ? Um, well, I have to say, can you hear me good, first of all? I can hear you. Okay. Yes. So. Um, the cliche goes that God is a gentleman and he does not force himself on you and he woos you. There was a period of wooing for me 
there was no one particular event. You know, some people, um, whether it they be, you know, get incarcerated or, you know, something drastic happens in their lives or something like that, that was not, that's not my story. My story is, was, it was a period of wooing over a period of time. Um, I was in my 20s um, and I was still going out and clubbing and doing all that kind of stuff. And, and it got to the point where one morning I woke up after going out and I didn't like the way I felt. So mm -hmm. I, stopped, mm -hmm. I stopped drinking. So that's where it started. It started with me stopped drinking. So after I stopped drinking, I was still going and hanging out, you know, out there faking the funk, trying to make it look like I'm doing what I'm really not doing. I'm out there like, you know, asking the bartender to give me a, a glass with a bunch of stuff in it to try to make it look like I'm drinking a drink, but I'm really not. Sometimes, wow. you know, we just try to fake the phone, you know, just to try to fit in places, you know, but you just not supposed to fit in. I never had, yeah. but it's okay. And I'm okay with that now. But anyway, that's another story. Um, but it was a period of wooing. So um, I was working at the bank with this very lovely young lady. And um, she's always been a great influence in my life. And I, I tell people all the time that she's one of the reasons why I gave my life to Christ, because she's always been that loving soul. And you know her as Elder uh, Lydia Filet. <laughs> I probably said your name wrong, but it's okay. No, you said it right. You got it. I did it again. All right. Yeah, you got it. So, um, so I was working with her, and <laughs> she can attest that BC was very special for me. <laughs> it's a very special time. Interesting. Very interesting. Interesting. Very interesting time. And um, I stopped drinking. I was still going out and I was living in um, a little small town locally. And as I was riding by, there was this building that used to always draw my attention and it was a church. And I was talking to Lydia one day and I was like, she was like, Janae, she's like, you've done everything. She was like, but you just need to ask them to come into your heart. Um, and I was like, okay. So I was riding like, every day. I would ride past this little place on my way to work and on my way home. And I'll never forget. I said, Lord, I said, if there are people at this church today, I am going in here and I'm going to get saved. Mm. And so I'll never forget. I, I was coming up and there were a bunch of cars in the parking lot. I said, oh, okay. So I turned my signal light on. And I went in and I never forget, I walked in the door and there's a landing and I opened the door and I peeked my head around the corner to where they were, have, they were having a meeting in the back room. And I looked in, uh, being the person that I am, always in order, <laughs> trying to be, I told them, I said, um, when you're done with your meeting, if you don't mind, I would like to give my life to Christ. Wow. And they was like, oh, meeting's over. <laughs> And um and actually and then after that point I started visiting that place. I was a return visitor and I finally joined one day. And I even remember how I started singing. I never forget. We were having a high time in service one day, and there was one of the ladies that, that sang on the worship team at the church. And I just looked at her while during praise and worship and I said, I want to sing. And she was just like, I don't know what to do. And no sooner than she said that, the pastor came up and he was like, he was like, there may be somebody out there with a gift or a talent. If you want to sing, come on up here. And I said, okay. <laughs> and so I went and I stood up there. And after that, that's how I, that's how that door was open. But that's how it was no one particular event. It was truly a wooing for me and when I actually gave my life to Christ. Amen. Wow. Woo. So that's so powerful. Dynamic. I love that. It was a wooing time. I love it that. Really I love it. it. So when God woos you, it's nothing like it. You will you will always there will be no comparison. And not only will there be no comparison, you will know that it's nobody but him. Mm. There's mm -hmm. not gonna be any type of confusion. There's not gonna be any type of confusion because it's gonna be Amen. it's it's a piece about it. It's a, it's a piece and a settling about it when he woos you. And it's just like, it's just like he speaks to you in that still small voice. And that's what it was. It was just like, and it was just like, everything was just like, oh, you know, choirs of angels. And, you know, people say it's, you know, so funny that, you know, the light bulbs truly 
went off for me in a lot of areas in my life. And he truly illuminated a lot of areas where I was truly walking in darkness, whether it has, was in relationships or it just, in a lot of areas in my life, I was in darkness. He really, truly did bring the light, you know, like the, what is the Clark sisters? You brought the sunshine. Mm. Oh my, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He brought the sunshine in my life yeah, and I yes. could see a lot of yeah. things for what they truly were. And it's just like, you know, how the, the enemy is a shape shifter and, you know, how he is, you know, pretends and all this other kind of stuff. And I could see where a lot of pretending was going on. And, you know, he just illuminated. I mean, just he just gave me a whole new mindset. I just start to think different and see things different. And, and you know, and it's still a process. There are still areas that are, he's still working on. But this is as, as all of us. Yeah. And it's just from the beginning, I could see where that initial change happened. And, that was an awesome thing. It wow. Was, I can wow. say just from, from the side view, it was it was awesome to, to see a life change right before my very eyes. Um, it, j- just to see, you know, somebody who was hungry, you know, ready, just needed to make that extra, you know, just needed to say, okay. Lord, come into my heart. And then to watch someone who was actively walking. Because sometimes you get the emotional breakdown and you go, "Uh Mm uh-huh, and you cry, you have all these tears and you're snotting at the altar and you're still doing the same thing. And and I'm not saying it's not a process because there is, and I'm not saying you're going to cut everything off immediately, but to actually see someone walking, trying every day, every day, every day to walk the way God the way God had purpose for us to walk. For me, it's been very inspirational. Janae's life um, has been very inspirational for me to keep going. Amen. Amen. I still remember the day and where I was when he called my name. And it, you know, when you hear that for the first time, that's something you will never forget. I remember I was laying in my bed and he called my name. He said, Janae. And I never forget it because it sounded like a classmate that I went to with in high school when I went to high school with and I will never forget that I will never forget the day he called my name never oh my never. Never. Mm. Ooh, what an awesome experience oh my gosh wow so Janae can you tell us a little bit um just a little bit about your background and your your childhood and um you know what did that what did that look like for you growing up well um I like I'll tell anybody I'm a country girl um, but I will put on some eyelashes and some lipstick, but I don't mind getting dirty either. Um, yes. I come from a family of what I call black rednecks. Like, <laughs> no, serious up, serious up. And I and they they all know that. I'm talking the girls is mudding and driving trucks the whole nine. My cousins fish and shoot. My uncle skin things. I mean, my grandparents had a farm with chickens and pigs. I when I say country, I mean country as of right now, I still my family lives on a lane there's like i have a couple of aunts and uncles who all live on the same lane so you know and you, you know you holler across the lane yeah people. that's country all the way, so, all the way. you know i'm that that's the type of upbringing and um i am the youngest of my mother's children so i've always been very independent because i had to amuse myself <laughs> so um yeah so and that independence has not changed um, a lot of things, my independence came from both two areas, being taught and survival. Um, it got to a point where you were independent because you needed to survive, but at the same time, you mm-hmm. were also taught independence. So it was direct and indirect teaching of independence. So having to fend for myself a lot, I've grown up knowing how to do that. And, um, so it's nothing for me to, uh, you know, get a screwdriver and a hammer out and you know, put stuff together and things like, you know, you have to do that as a single woman anyway. Um, Not saying that I want to continue to do that, but I will say that as of right now, I can can do the amen, amen. Um, But I can do that. (laughs) I have no problem fishing. I have shotguns. I ain't got no problem with none of that kind of stuff. I can get dirty with the best of them. I ain't got no problem with it. But um, at the same time, I'm also a girly girl. But, you know, watching my mom and their... I say a lot of times that a very large part of me is very um, old fashioned and old soul. 
Um, I'm not that old, but it's a lot of things that I'm very traditional in. And I think mm -hmm. that had a lot to do with what I saw in my upbringing and, you know, my family and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, it's things that I remember my mother teaching me that not everybody teaches their kids nowadays. I can remember sitting down at the table with my mom and her showing me how to write a check. You know, not everybody does that kind of stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. But look at where we are now. Lydia, you know we know. I, because yeah. I used to also work in a bank and there would be college seniors who would walk into a bank and would not know how to write a check. Wow. So I was like, baby. Very true. But, baby. But at the same time, you know, being independent, you know, I learned how um, to cook. Um, I would, in the summertime, I would. She's um, a great cook. <laughs> in the summertime, um, I would cook dinner. When my mom then came home, my mom always worked. My mom was never, you know, thank God we didn't never miss no meals. As me and my sister were discussing the other day, if nothing, you ain't never, ain't nothing getting cut off in our house, and you ain't never going to go home. You might not want what you got to eat, but you're going to eat. <laughs> but, I mean, and it's stuff like that. My mom always instilled in us independence, a strength that is just so unspoken of the things, you know, when I just look at um, the things that she did to make sure that we had everything that we needed. And my mom also instilled a whole lot of hustle in me. A whole mm. lot of hustle. Mm. And I've been a hustler for as long as I can think, like all the way back into like middle school. I say this all the time. I've always been a hustler. Like when I was in middle school, I was like babysitting. I was babysitting kids who were only a couple years younger than me. And wow. then by the time I got to high school, I figured out that, you know, I started messing around with my, um, with hair and stuff. I used to always do my own hair and it was fun to me. You know, these, are, I'm a creative. So things I do, I do a lot of stuff with my hands. And by the time I got to high school, then it was doing people's hair. I was even doing my teacher's hair. <laughs> so, you know, there's always been some hustle in me. So my mom always instilled that in me to, we never were ones to sit around and do nothing. Lazy was not a word that we lived by. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that's my entire family. We don't do that. <laughs> that's not something we do. So, you know, when I see that in a lot of people nowadays, it's just like, wow, <laughs> I come from a whole totally different generation. Wow. So that's wow. a lot of that. That's a lot of the stuff that really triggered who I am today and why I operate in a lot of ways that I do. Amen. At the core, I'm gonna stay the same, you know. But the Lord, you know, He'll soften some things out. But you know, right? Yes, yes. But that's awesome, you know. And I think that a lot of times we can reflect back on our childhood and see how. We were brought up and the things and look at ourselves today like okay i know why she did that i know why mommy said that now or i know why daddy taught me that because you know it's very important i think what a lot of people are missing is what you had in your childhood like teaching you how to write a check i was never taught that and not that i had a bad parent it's just that, that they never taught us that kind of stuff but me as a parent i'm very transparent with my kids i tell them things that they don't want to hear right. because hey <laughs> and they were like, mom, why are you telling me that? Because you need to know it. And if you can ask me questions, then you're going to get an answer. Yeah. Better tell them for somebody else. Tell them. Right. And tell them the wrong stuff. <laughs> and exactly. tell them the wrong stuff. And, you know, I have um, some friends and she's always been super, uh, super transparent with her kids. And it used to freak me out. Like, <laughs> I would be like, oh, my God, are you seriously talking to your son and his friend about condoms? She's like, yeah. I'm like, oh my God. But, you know, because, you know, there, even though my mom taught me a lot of stuff, there were still, they, from her generation, there were certain things, you know, you just don't, mm -hmm. you just don't do that. <laughs> you just don't do that. Right. But, um, you know, certain things you, so even with everything, whether it was spoken or unspoken, I've always been an observer. Mm -hmm. So I'm either going to learn from what you did something good, or I'm going to learn not to do what you did because it was bad. Either way, I'm always looking at mother. Wow. Awesome. Mm. I'm telling you, this is, this is so good. So we're going to continue on. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay, look, my, my internet is going in and out. So I hope you guys can still hear me. I'm, I'm a little yeah. sketchy here. You're still um, good. Okay, this is, so you're, you're, you're next with the next question, I believe. So I want you to share because, um, because I know a, a piece of this. I want you to share about what happened with um, you health-wise a couple of years ago. 
Um, well, it started, I think, over 10, seven, eight years ago. Wow. It's been a while now. I'm starting to lose track. Um, but it started, um, how long was it? Yeah. Oh, almost 10, oh, it, it will be 10 years next year. I had to think about it because I think I was 33 years old. Yeah. Um, yes, it was the, the, the winter before I turned 33. So it all started when I was about 32 years ago, 32 years old. So it was 10 years ago. It'll be 10 years ago this fall. Anyway, moving on because I'm a person of detail, I had to get that right. Um, anyway, details. so detail, terrible. Woo. Sometimes it, it seems like a curse, but it's really not. Anyway, so about 10 years ago, um, I started having problems at my job and I couldn't really figure out what was going on. Actually, it was, yeah, because it'll be 10 years this year. So I had been at my job maybe a little over a year. Sorry, I had to get it right. Um, I had been at my job maybe a little over a year and I just started to not feel well and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I was at work and I started noticing I started having these swelling in my ankles. And um, I couldn't, sorry about that. I meant to cut that alarm off and I didn't. Anyway, um, so I started having this swelling in my ankles and I had this extreme fatigue. And I'm talking, I lived in an apartment building downtown on the plaza. And there was a very long flight of stairs. And I remember to the point where I would be climbing those stairs after work in the evening, just praying, God, please don't let me fall because I was so tired and it would take me like 20 minutes just to get up my stairs to my wow. apartment. And then I would go on there. I would throw some food down my throat and go to bed. And I would wake up in the morning just as if I had never gone to sleep. And it was just terrible. And I was just like, what is going on? So I was going to this doctor's office and I kept going to the doctor. And for years, the only thing that this woman could focus on was the fact that I was overweight. And I'm just like, look, <laughs> she was putting me on all these medications to try to control my blood pressure because my blood pressure was sky high and just going back and forth. And then that she kept changing the medicine because I never forget one of the medications that I took gave me this awful facial swelling, like my lips swole up and my mm -hmm. eyes swole up. I was just mm -hmm. like, nah, I'm not taking any more of that. Um, and I remember just going back and forth with her and just nothing ever came of it. And then finally, one day I came in for a follow up with her and she wasn't there. And so I ended up seeing a physician's assistant. And when I saw the physician's assistant, she said um, she looked at my charts and she was like, did anybody ever take a urine sample from you? And I was like, no. <laughs> and so when she finally took my urine sample, she told me she was like, you are spilling protein in your urine. She was yeah. like, you need to see a nephrologist, which is a um, kidney doctor you need to see a nephrologist immediately. And so when I finally got the appointment to the nephrologist, he asked me, he was like, why are you just now getting here? I was wow. like, and I had no answer for him because I was just going based on what the doctor was telling me. I didn't, this is something very important that everybody has to learn. You have to learn to be your own advocate. And I learned that later on in my medical mm -hmm. journey. We'll get to that. So, um, so she had already ordered this test for me to go into the hospital to, um, they were going to check my thyroid to see if something um, was going on with that. Thyroid or pituitary gland, either one, either one of them. Anyway, they were going to do a biopsy. And I um, remember that I was about to be wheeled in for the procedure. And I got, they gave me the phone. It was like, you have a phone call. And so um, they gave me the phone. It was a nephrologist. And he was saying, uh, you know, you're going to have to stay in the hospital. He was like, because your kidneys are barely functioning. And we're going to have to keep wow. you to the hospital and you're going to have to stay there. And I went into, I was in a state of shock. I mean, they're about to roll me into um, an operating room for one procedure. And this man is telling me that I'm not going to be able to come out of the hospital, that I have to stay here because my kidneys are barely functioning. And so I'm like, okay. And so I'm in shock. I don't really know what's going on. So I wake up and I'm in the hospital and I'm just like, they're, the people are doctor after doctor is coming and talking to me and they're telling me they're like, your kidneys are only functioning at like 13% or something and you're going to have to stay mm. here and I never forget they put me on like 100 milligrams of prednisone. That is a lot. Gosh. Wow. Yeah. It was trying to shock my kidneys back. In wow. And I never <laughs> forget so all like John, like you said with your sister all, all alarms went up in the kingdom. Mm. And I never forget I remember laying in at bed so you know the, the call went out to pray for me. And I never forget, I remember laying in that bed 
and um, our overseer who is, is over our church, um, she has a uh, she has a she has a pair had a pair of um, elderly intercessors, and I remember laying in that bed hearing the women pray for me. Wow! And I said, "Okay, God." And so, hmm. you know, all of this stuff, every everything that I went through, I remember being in the hospital, and I remember um, ha- having to go to the bathroom. This is how the Lord will kill some stuff in your life. I remember having to go to the bathroom, and I had to get help. That was the first time ever. Wow. that I've had to have someone help me use the bathroom. So that killed all kind of modesty in me mm-hmm. <laughs> and any kind of pride when somebody has to help you use the bathroom. Yeah. And so um, fast forward to me getting on dialysis and I was often on dialysis for several years. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in dialysis in a center. And um, then I got to the point because I remember sitting there one day on the side of the bed, um, I think it was around my, the second time I got on dialysis. And, no, it was the first time. And um, I had just started, I was going to sen- in center treatment. And I said, Lord, I'm among the walking dead. And, wow. you know, some people get happy with having other people have to care for them. But I was like, no, nah. I was like, I am too young and I have too much life to live. This is not the end. Right. And so um, it got to the point because I am ever learning. It got to the point where I stopped going to in center dialysis and I started to do it myself at home. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so I was doing it myself at home. And I remember sitting on the side of the bed. And my life was controlled by an alarm on my phone because I had to be on the dialysis machine a certain amount of hours every night. So when that alarm went off, that meant I had to go home. And mm. so um I remember sitting there and I said, um, actually, before I even started doing that, I was like, um, because they wanted me to have this surgery um, and I was afraid. And um, I said, I don't, I can't do this. And I remember sitting there and God saying, I got you. And that settled everything. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, got you. I said, okay, okay, all right. And so when he says, I got you, it don't matter what nobody else says. Nope. When he says, I got you, that's the only I got you that you need to hear. Amen. And so I was Amen. sitting on the side of the bed and I just kept saying, God, this is not my life. This is not my life. This is not my life. And so um, fast forward a couple of years, I had gotten uh, still doing home dialysis and um, I had started to lose some weight and my kidney function started to recover. I said, okay. I said, all right. And it got start, it started getting better and better and better and better. And then it got to the point where the lady was like, well, you only need to do one exchange a day. And she was <laughs> like, you know what? We're going to take you off and let you do a, a couple weeks off and, and, and see how, wow. see how that goes. And then next thing I know it was a month. And then next thing I know I was done. Yes. And so for like maybe a year, year and a half, I guess I was good. <laughs> but then all of a sudden my numbers started to go down again. And my body started to not, the kidney function started to get worse again. And I said, okay. And so um, I was going to this doctor and he was struggling because I had gotten to the point where I was like, no, I was like, I am not going on dialysis again. I'm not doing it. You know, Mm. we can get stiff neck. And I was stiff neck. And he was just, he was praying. This man was praying. Thank the Lord, you had a praying doctor. praying that I would give in. He was like, he was like, because you, I mean, I was walking around with my blood pressure. I was taking three kinds of blood pressure medication twice a day. Mm-hmm. I was walking around with my blood pressure in triple digits, top and bottom, every single day. Every Ooh, single day. Wow. Thank God for grace. Hello, somebody. Amen. Even when it's us being hard headed, mm-hmm. thank God for grace. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. But so walking around. So then I finally got to the point where I gave in. He was like, thank you. <laughs> he, didn't like, know. he didn't know what a breakthrough he had right. he, he, didn't, he, he didn't realize he didn't, he didn't realize. even know <laughs> but um so i finally succumbed to all of that and you know worked it all out with um my um job and i was only go- i was only working um i think what three, three i was working three days a week days and i was taking week. dialysis two days a week and um but let me tell you how the lord took care of me yes tell financially it. financially because he was in tell all it. of this financially tell it. so um while i was working when i 
got my job. I signed up for something. Uh, this is another plug for all of you people out there who have insurance. If you do not have, um, what is it, disability insurance, get you some. Yes. Long term and short term. Anyway, and make sure your waiting period is uh, the short time, which I think is what, 90 days? 90 days or less. Make sure your waiting time is 90 days or less. Anyway, moving on. And that only cost me, I think, like a dollar and 17 cents. Good plug. Wow. <laughs> Good plug. Good plug. Low somebody. Adulting 101. Plug. Some insurance Darn. and some assurance. Right. <laughs> Sad. Go ahead, Minister. So, <laughs> so I was working my job and I was getting paid more not working my full hours than I was working my full time job. Look at because God. Of my disability and insurance. That's the kind of guy they we were paying for everything that I was not working on the job in addition to working the job. Wow. Look at Ooh, God. I said, I said, okay, Lord. I said, okay, Lord. I mean, he worked everything out. My job. They, everything worked out. Everything worked out. And so then it, we got a little bit farther down the line. And I was like, I was like, I'm not keep. I'm not, I'm not gonna keep doing this. I was like, I got over it real fast. I said, All right, Lord. I was like, We need to. I was like, Okay, we need to. I was working on getting a live transplant. I had someone who was gonna give me a kidney, but there are certain physical requirements that you have to. Um, meet in order to be a live donor and she was working on meeting those and they asked me would you receive a cadaver donor I said yes I will I said I'm gonna take whatever comes first Amen. and so this is how let me just let me have the Lord work this out too so um so when I got listed on the transplant list because I had been on dialysis so long they made my time on the list retroactive back to when wow. I had first started dialysis about five years ago. So it was like I had been on the wait list for five years. I started getting calls immediately. Jesus. Immediately. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I said, okay, Lord. So then one day he says, he tells me, he says, pack a bag and put it and put it by your door. I said, okay. And so I was like, because I'm getting a kidney. Well, throughout <laughs> that, through that year, it did mm. not happen. But, you know, you, you know, sometimes you try to get discouraged. I was like, no, I was like, no, he still said it's going to happen. And that's what I believe. Yeah. So the first year I packed my bag, the second year I started making a plan. Mm. I made a plan of who I had to call, who had to do what, how, where I was going to stay, how everything mm -hmm. was going to work out. I had a list of who was going to be the contact people. I had somebody down to pay my bill. Sometimes when he gives you instructions, he needs you to move. Obedience is better than sacrifice. My Man. God, say that. Let me say this. To, let me let me let me take a little sidebar. On Saturday, the Lord told me to sow a seed into someone's life. He mm -hmm. said, "Empty your wallet and give them everything Ooh. you have." I said, "Okay." I said, "Lord, I'm." Oh, I said, "I told him I said all I can do is be obedient." It wasn't but nine dollars. I said, "Cause I don't carry around cash like that." And the mm -hmm. fact that I even had any cash was a miracle. And so I gave right. it to him. By the time I got home, I had my money back. Wow. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So then this morning, I was standing in my kitchen. And the Lord says to me, it's not the size of your seed. It's the obedience behind it. That's mm. right. Get a text message on my phone. Getting a refund from something else. And that is uh, almost 10 times the amount of the seed. That wow. I <laughs> look at look at God. So I don't know about nobody else, but in the past few years, the Lord has been not only you can't just know the word, you got to know the person that the word is about. Yeah. And the Lord has been showing me who he is through experiential learning and the things that I've gone through. Come on back. My so, God. Mm. I'm sitting there. I'm, I've, mm. I have received a couple calls. And the reason why it had taken me so long to get my kidney, catch this, is because of my blood type. I can't receive everything from everybody. <laughs> yes. yes. Naturally yes. and spiritually. Yes. Naturally and spiritually. Yes. Yes. I, I can give it out, but I can't take everything mm. from everybody. Put my hand right here. Oh, my goodness. Mm. I said, okay. So I'm going along one day, 
And I'll never forget, oh, I know what happened. I was helping at a, re a retirement party for one of the people at the church. And I had um, just, you know, where I hang out in the kitchen. So just, and I love entertaining. I love that kind of stuff. And just, you know, doing whatever. And I was like, you know, I told people, I was like, you know, everybody was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go. And so no sooner than I get home and take my shoes off, I get a phone call. They were like, Miss Fontaine, how soon can you get here? Because we got a kidney for you. Praise God. I said, two and a half hours, ma'am. My bag is already packed. <laughs> and so I, I started my phone tree. I started what I was supposed to do. And I locked, shut my house down. I cut everything off. And I met some people at the bank. And I never forget I had to go to the bank because they were supposed to be having a special preacher the next day. I said, here, take this seed. <laughs> I said, because I can't leave here without giving this seed. So mm. I gave them. I met them at the bank and told them everything. They were so it's like, oh my God. I was like, oh my God. I was like, this is happening. I was like, this is really happening. Yes, it and is. so it was just, it was just amazing. But um, one of the things that I, uh, I'm gonna back up just for one moment. Um, so while the time that I was actually on dialysis, I was on a machine, a very, very large cumbersome machine, and it required mm -hmm. some serious supplies. And I never forget, we had went away to a conference at our church. Oh, 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 I heard this. This is good. This is and good. We had went away to a conference for our church. It was our, our overseer's <laughs> annual conference. And it was such a mighty move of God in that place, in the town, that the whole town got shut down. All the electricity like, went out in the whole entire town. My machine is electric. That's what I needed to do my dialysis at night. Mm -hmm. So we are in this hotel and I'm just like, oh my God, before I even go upstairs, I'm like, oh my God, I go to the front desk and I tell the people, I was like, I'm on dialysis. My machine is upstairs. I was like, what am I supposed to do? They were, and they were just as unconcerned and I was like, you just don't have to call the ambulance. I was like, oh, going to walk away from you. <laughs> <laughs> and so here I am. And I, I, I would really wish I had brought the picture on to show you of myself, but I literally, I was, a blowfish. I was yeah. a blowfish. I was so swollen up with medicine and things that I was just almost unrecognizable. And that's between the medicine and the fluid and everything that I was carrying around in my body. It was ridiculous. I couldn't wear normal shoes. No. I mean, it was, it was, it was special. It was special. I was, I was, I was full. I was full. And I, and we were on like the fourth floor maybe, or maybe higher. I can't remember it, but we were not on the first floor. Mm -hmm. And so this entire hotel, no elevators, no nothing. I am struggling up these stairs. Electricity is out in the entire hotel. And I'm going up these stairs thinking, Lord, what am I going to do? So we get up to the hotel room. All of the electricity is out in the hotel room, except for the one socket where my machine is plugged up. Woo! The one socket. Right. In this crazy entire break. Hotel crazy break right there. Right there. Right there. Woo! The electricity out everywhere except for where my Hallelujah. And not the, second, not the second plug. Who just else? the plug. Who just else? The plug. Just Who the plug. Just the plug. Just the plug. Just the plug where my machine is plugged in. Not the one Who below it. Just man. that mm. plug. Mm. And I was like, I, I was just like, all I could do is put my hands up. I was like, you know what? I was like, God, you got this. That next night, swollen all, I took off running around that hotel. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> Good. Uh, woo, right my God, my God. <gasps> well, all woo. of this, all of this started because growing up, up into um, adulthood, I was had some really low self esteem. I had a lot of rejection issues and and all that kind of stuff, and never quite felt like I belonged or. I was always different. I was always an outsider, you know, stuff like that. And because I didn't like myself and mm. all this other kind of stuff, you know, when you have um, what I was diagnosed with was lupus, which is an autoimmune disorder where your body fights against itself. And basically that was from self-rejection. Wow. And wow. because of that, my body felt that. So you can say what you want, sticks and stones and, and words and all the other kind of stuff. No, that's not the truth because of the, the inner dialogue that I was having mm -hmm. with myself. That's good. That I broke me. Ah, <laughs> wow. I broke me. Nobody else wow. didn't have to break me. I broke me mm. and I couldn't blame it on nobody else. 
But wow. um, continue so, because I got to step away for a second. Something's come up, but continue on. No emergency. Okay. Just continue on. All right. Okay. All right. Continue on. So all of that just got me to the point where going through all of that, everything that I went through, it just made me trust God more. Yeah. It really showed me who he was, who he truly was my healer. Since I got, I now have three kidneys. Only one of them works. But since I got my, my new kidney, I have a whole new lease on life. I have energy out of this world. Yeah. I just feel so much better about myself. There are things that I do now that I thought I never would have done. Mm-hmm. But it's because I am not wasting the gift that I was given. Excellent. And so I'm making full use of the young lady's kidney that I received. And I just thank God for everything that he did through that and how he is still working in my life. But, you know, it's, 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 it's just God. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. Good God. I'm telling you, if you're if you haven't shared this video with somebody to hear this awesome testimony, share it now. They could do the replay later. But what a testament of God's grace and mercy, and His goodness and His exceeding power! Like who heard of that? The whole hotel has oh, no power. The tail. It was the tail. It was ridiculous. The whole was, town. The town was out when we left there. It was lights flashing everything the whole town got shook the whole town was shook but i was all right you know we we minimalize god so much we minimalize god we put him in this little teeny old man box that he can only do this this way he can only save this way he can only deliver this way he can only you know make things happen the way we think in our finite mind. Who My ever, God. who ever, ever would have thought that I'm going to shut out the whole town but one plug in one hotel in this one room? Because of me. Ever. Because Crazy. of his child. Because his daughter was in there. And though he could have saved you, and this is the thing, he could have saved you without the dialysis machine, but he did all that to prove to you that I see you and I got you. Yes, he always has. But Jesus, he's the he's the power. He's the power he's source the power. anyway. He's the power. He source. The power. Always the power source. <laughs> always the only oh source. Goodness. he is that, the source. That story it never ceases to amaze me, <laughs> and it happened to me. It never ceases to amaze me. Man, I need a quarter, a string quarter, a keyboard, or something. Man, this is this is shout music. I'm about to get y'all some little chords, a little music playing in the background. Yes, yes. Yes. You're gonna be undignified. You know that song because it says I become even more dignified, undignified than this. There it is. Yes. Oh my God. And a shouting undignified moment. I mean. If you just don't know, you just got to know, get to know, get and to that, know. That's just, that's just, that's, that's not even all. I mean, I just look no. back and I just think over all the things that I went through during that time. I remember one time going to dialysis and I was supposed to be going home and I stopped to get something to eat. And I stood in front of this man and blacked out. I blacked out wow. standing there wow. and I was driving myself. So what, I mean, if I had not stopped, I could have blacked out while I was driving and I could have died. Look at God. Mm. 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 Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. All, all the days of my life. All the days of my life. Oh my God. Somebody said, um, Karen said faith increasing moment. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. And oh, let me tell you, I'm telling you, there's so much in my life. Just, I have so many testimonies. That's why I had to ask them which one y'all talking about. We were going to our um, our church conference in North Carolina one year, and I never forget. I um, when I would have lupus flares, I wouldn't be able to walk, and I would literally like I could not stand on my own feet. Like somebody had to come to my house one time. I had to crawl to the door, and I'll wow. never forget it. Yeah. And this one time, we were going to. Um, Oh God! Oh, I gotta tell you something else back here. Oh, oh Jesus! Um, so we were going to um, our conference in North Carolina, and I remember one of my foot 
feet was hurting so bad I could not walk on it, like to the point where if you even thought about touching it, I was in pain. Mm. And I remember us, and it was about a five hour drive down there. And I remember us going down there and the Lord spoke to me about those lepers. And he said they were healed as they went. My By the God. time I got yeah, to North yeah. Carolina, yes, yes. Sis was walking, yeah. sis was jumping up and down because I led praise and worship. My God. Worship. That's why I say he's been ex- showing me experientially who he is by yes. the experience that I have gone through. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, saying just, amazing, just amazing, just amazing, just amazing. Just amazing. My God, my God. I used to sit that's on the, the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. I used to sit on a stool and do praise and worship because I wouldn't give up. Ah, mm. give up. Nothing could stop me. Yes. What shall separate you from the... Come on, minister. <laughs> I sat on a yes. stool and did praise and worship. My you God. kept doing what God had commissioned you to do for your life. You didn't let anything that's stop you to from doing what he told you you needed to be doing. Because that's who I am. That's who I mm-hmm. am. It doesn't change because of my circumstances. Mm. That's who I am. Mm-hmm. My God. Yeah. Ministry doesn't stop. It does not stop. It does not. 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 Wow. I am just so elated. I'm so glad we had you come on tonight. I'm oh, just let like. Let me tell you one more thing. Let me tell you one more thing. Go ahead. Let me tell you one more thing, girl. Yes. Yes. So towards the end, before I got my transplant, I started getting these infections out of nowhere. I remember you had one of those. Remember, I, remember. I got two. Yeah. These are these are infections that kill people. Yes. Yes. I had it twice. Mm. And wow. the last time, the Lord showed me that it was an attack. And I was laying in the bed in the hospital. And I remember I was seeing myself and I was running. Mm. And as I was running, something tripped me. And it tripped me and it shook me to the point where I literally shook in my bed. And he woke, woke me up. I was like, oh, okay. That's what this is. You're trying to trip me up. It's um, not going to work. Mm. It's not going to work. But yeah, I said, okay. But yeah, right. I literally had infections. They, they could not figure out where it came from because it was an attack. The place it came from, they don't know about. <laughs> it was an attack. My it was God. An attack. But I survived that too. Yeah. And I'm here to tell about My it. My God. Woo, Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, and just something just came to me when you said it was an infection and they couldn't find a cure. They couldn't figure out what it was because it was an attack. That's what's they going on today. That's what's going on today with the coronavirus. It's an attack. But it's an attack that was allowed so that Hello. God's people Hello. can recognize and understand who he is and the realness of who he is. Yes, absolutely. Yes. You're frozen, dear. Yeah, she froze. We fr- you're frozen, uh, uh, Janae. Lord, bring her back. It'll 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 it it'll it it uh, correct itself. It'll correct itself. Yes, but powerful, powerful ministry, powerful testimony. My God, powerful. My God, my hey, God. She back. back. You back? Yeah, yeah. I'm back. All right, All right yeah, you back. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened. I was like, what happened? <laughs> the devil got mad because you was telling the goodness of the Lord. He didn't, he didn't finish it. Everywhere I go. That's right. <laughs> I know that's right. Still going to tell it. Yeah, mm. whenever, whenever the Lord has me release a part of my testimony, it's because somebody's in the house. Mm-hmm. Yes. Get, one time I, we went to, down to Georgia and I wasn't even supposed to be there. And <laughs> I struggled with going. And because I was like, I don't have any money. I'm not gonna be able to go and blah, blah, blah. Well, got down there. Not only did they sow a seed into my life, but when I shared my testimony, there was somebody in the audience who was actually had a family member who was going through the same thing. Wow. We don't know wow. for ourselves. We don't know. We don't. We don't. We do not. We go and that's why it's so yeah. important to never forget your testimony and always mm-hmm. tell it when given a platform because we don't know who's listening. And who's watching? 
and to be able to do it. Yeah, years ago, he told me, he was like, how will people ever know that I healed you if you don't tell your testimony? Ah, my God, exactly. That's right. How would people ever know that God, the God of the children of Israel and the Hebrews God, if the if he didn't do what he did with the plagues in Egypt and they were talking and talking and talking and all the surrounding nations were talking and for generations and generations they were still talking we still talking about we the stuff he did when he parted the Red Sea yeah. we are still in awe of how Pharaoh's army was drowned in the Red Sea because they went to chase after God's children and God said uh, no but come along yeah. I'm gonna show you something not today. Not today. Yes. Still God. Same God. Same God. Same God. Same God. Same God. Wow. Same. Oh my goodness. So we have come. Uh, oh my goodness. I don't even want this to end, but we know that we're gonna you know. Is there another question? What not another question? Yes, yes. Well, okay, good. You, you, you got to give us you, you got to give us that uh and that, is that oh. one more? Oh we gotta so yeah, we just want her. We just want her to give a few words to anyone who's listening, to oh, be an yeah. encouragement to it. anybody who may be struggling in their faith, they're struggling to believe in God, especially in these times now. There's everything that's going on in our nation and the world. So, if there's anything that you can say to encourage um, anyone who may be listening, that may be struggling in their faith, though, just struggling to believe in who God is and what He's able to do. Well. One of the first things that comes to mind is something that my bishop says, and I love him dearly. Um, bishop Richard B. Pascal, Grown Grace Worship Center in Del Mar, Maryland. Talk about it. Pop it up. Um, one of the things that he has said for years, and it's, it's things that always, you know, certain things that stick with me, and one of the things that really sticks with me is he always says, don't let what's going on around you affect what's going on inside you. Mm. And we have to always know that the greater one is on the inside of us. So no matter what's going on around us, oh my God. that cannot disturb what we have going on the inside of us. That Whatever's going on around us can't make us doubt. It can't make us yes. hope because the greater one is on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. So we have to always try to, it's going to be a fight. You are going to struggle in some things. In some areas, it's going to be easier than others um, yes. for you to overcome. And one of the things, even in everything that's going on with the pandemic, the one of the things that the Lord has truly had me focus on is a heart of gratefulness. Mm -hmm. I am just so grateful how everything has been able to work out for me the way it has worked out. I refuse to be doom and gloom. Hello. I refuse. I refuse to, to focus on the negative. And he said, one of the things that we tend to do is we tend to focus more on what we don't have than what we do. Amen. And so mm -hmm. for the past Amen. few months, um, and even before that, um, he was having me to deal with the spirit of fear and fear would be something sometimes that would crop up in my life. And it will be something as simple as I used to get up really early in the morning and go to the gym. And when I say really early, I mean like dark outside. Like dark. Yes. Like dark, like black outside. Like dark I'm, 30. I'm leaving sometime and the sun is barely coming up. Wow. And one of the things and what had happened was the enemy is very, 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 very cunning. Yeah. And he had started to plant, try to plant these seeds of fear. But how many know that God will not have you unaware to the enemy's devices? Mm -hmm. And so it started with um, something happened mm -hmm. um, at, at, at work. And then it, the enemy was like, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't go to the store at night. Okay. And so, you know, I, you know, didn't pay it no mind. And I went home and, you know, the next morning I went to get up and go to the gym and then started playing with my mind about going to the gym in the morning. I said, wait, nope, nope, nope. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I see you. Mm -hmm. I see you. Mm -hmm. And that. we have to recognize that stuff and call it out because what he was doing is he was trying to plant seeds of fear yes. so that I would be ended up living in bondage stuck in this yep. house not going where i need to the devil is a lie do you know how long it took me to come outside of myself to actually start living and stop just existing Woo. Oh, take and push me back into that cave i think not amen my god so my thing that i would tell you is check the root of stuff yeah when stuff is going on in your life check the root of it check the motive of mm -hmm. it check where it's mm -hmm. coming from Mm -hmm. If you out here trying to better yourself and something keep trying to pull you back, wait a minute, that's not God. 
So if I had to say anything is check the root of the things that are happening in your life. Check why you keep acting the way you do. Check why you keep popping off. Check, 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 mm-hmm. check, 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 mm-hmm. check, mm-hmm. check, and check some more. I ain't saying nothing about looking at nobody else. <laughs> hey, Matt, how about that? That's check. Right. Check, check yourself. And we are truly in a time where we can do a lot of self-reflection and really checking and just remember whose you are. And if you're not his, you can be. You can That's be. right. Right. And you can experience the same kind of peace. Um, I can't, I really can't express how I wake up in the morning with joy and just so excited to walk from my bedroom to my living room to go to work. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Stuff that. Like that. Yeah. I caught that. Stuff like that. Yeah. Stuff like that. But mm-hmm. he's just really truly been a keeper and just just be aware of your surroundings. But most of all, just be aware of you and everything. Right. Yeah. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Well, following that, we definitely want to offer Jesus to anybody who doesn't know because really we are talking about God and and you can't get to him without his son you can talk about God and you can talk about oh God is good yes but do you know how good God is to the point where he allowed his one and only son to die to one come to this earth he took off his kingly garments and put on flesh he put on dirt and he walked around in this earth and he dealt with the same stuff we deal with every single day. He didn't pop off. He didn't fly off. He didn't cuss nobody out. He didn't, you know, shoot nobody. He didn't beat nobody in the face. I mean, he did it the way it needed to be done so that he could be the perfect sacrifice for us because yeah. we flesh, we, we, we pop off sometimes we cut up yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he, God allowed his son to do that. And Jesus said, send me, I'll go. He willingly did it because of his heart of love for us. And he mm-hmm. gave his life. I mean, we are in Passion Week. We are, you know, talking yeah. about, we just had Palm Sunday yesterday. And we are going into, you know, this is where he was having his last supper. And this is where he was, mm-hmm. you know, giving out his last instructions. And this is, you know, we are walking into where, you know, he took that cross and he walked that cross and he was, Mm -hmm. um, nails Mm -hmm. were banged into his hands and his feet and he was whipped and they put the crown of thorns Mm -hmm. on his head to mock him, but they just did not know. Something I I heard recently was that the 39 lashes that every disease comes under these 39 categories. So he took 39 lashes for us. And it had to be 39 to cover everything. And this is the kind of God we serve. You you know, it it sounds cute. It sounds fancy. You know, it's, it's, you know, we play around, you know, we're lighthearted, but we're very serious when it comes to Jesus because he took all of that. I don't know about you. I have one child. I would not give my one child for anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially knowing the type of person that I was, can be. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So to know that an almighty God who created this entire world and knows the sin and of the world and in the world and in in the us in the world Mm -hmm. would allow his son to come and die to redeem us, to bring us back to himself. That is such a beautiful thing. If you don't feel loved, if you don't feel wanted, if you don't feel, you know, desired, let me tell you that God has done all of this. You don't there's no dollar you can put to it. There's no gifting you can put to it. There's nothing you can conjure up in yourself that would equal the thing that God has done to redeem us and to make us free. We Mm -hmm. are guiltless because Mm -hmm. because, only because of what Jesus Mm -hmm. has done for us. We don't have to walk around in shame. We don't have to walk around with our heads hung down. We can freely accept Jesus into our hearts and you have to accept him. You can't just say, okay, yeah, I'll go to church. You have to accept Jesus into your heart. And it's just this, you can repeat after me, say, Lord, I recognize right now that I'm a sinner. Mm. And I do no longer want to walk in this way. I want the grace. I want the gift that you have for me, all the things that you've created in me to be. I want to see it because God, where I am right now, life has got to be better than where I am right now. 
And so I accept you into my heart, God. Please wash away all the sin. I am a sinner. I know I have dirt. Please wash all that away. Please make me clean. Yes, Please Lord. make me whole. I believe that you allowed your son to do that just for me. And if I was the only person who ever sinned in the entire world, you would still allow your son to die just thank for you, me. Thank we you, thank you. And, and just say that and accept that in your heart and believe it. Mm -hmm. We confess mm -hmm. with our mouths and believe in our hearts. Yes. Oh God, that, that Jesus died for us and we, we accept him by confessing him and just believe yes. that in your heart. You are saved. You are saved when you confess with your mouth yes. and believe in your heart. Yes. So accept Jesus, take him into your heart, walk in freedom walk and knowing that yes. God has made you clean. You are a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yes. So yes. All things have passed yes. away. All things, all things mm. have become new. And from this moment on, you have a brand new life. Thank you. Jesus. And in Hallelujah. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's it. You're, Amen. you're in the kingdom of God. We are, we are we are blood family. <laughs> blood, we blood, and this blood is much thicker than any water. Yes, much thicker than any water. Yes, so we yes. pray that. What y'all think? This is great. I had a good time. Y'all have a good time. Cool. Yes, this has been awesome. Oh my gosh, Woo. I love it. Awesome. I love it. So if you're just signing on, please watch the playback. I'm telling you, you might shed some tears. Yes, Good. yes, you're gonna be or blessed. just take off running. Just take off running. Just take off running. Just take off running. Yeah. <laughs> take off running. All right. You know, it's funny. I wanted to say this before we close out. Um Jeanette, you were talking about the spirit of fear. And I remember I looked at the first live that we did, and I was talking about how we shouldn't fear and we had the peace of God. Yeah. And when all of a sudden we started getting cases close to us from the with this virus. When I tell you fear gripped me, I didn't leave the house for a whole week. I, I left the house last Saturday. I didn't leave out again until this Saturday just passed. I went and let my daughter. I said, nope. She wanted to go down. I said, nope, you're not leaving this house. And then I had, and I said, wait a minute, we need some groceries. I was like, I ain't going to the grocery store. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I went and I prayed. I said, Lord, this is not of you. I know it's not of you. This is the devil trying to grip me with fear. I said, I will not live in fear. And as David said, even in times when I'm afraid, God, I trust you. And then our pastor came back on Sunday and said, it doesn't matter if you get the coronavirus. If it's not your time to go, you're not going. You're not going. You're no. not going anywhere. It's up to us to uh, follow what we're supposed to do our part keep right, ourselves right, right right amen that's do right part. do your part. believe everything else up to god mm -hmm. and i had i had to get that off of me i was like oh no i'm no i'm no i'm not walking around in fear this is not of you i know this is not of you guys this is satan that's trying to attack me so i know how subtle and easy fear can oh, come yeah. in oh yeah and sometimes we don't even recognize it and i and i sat in the house for seven days didn't go anywhere i didn't even go outside because I'm afraid of the coronavirus. I'm afraid. I was like, oh no, I'm not living like this. I have the peace of God and I have yes. the assurance. Of God. And I have a, res a hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ that that same power that, that raised him from the dead is in me. Mm. Yes. So we're, I'm not going to be fearful of anything because I know who Jesus is. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I want to encourage you know, anybody who's, who's panicking and, and afraid, you know, Trust God. That's all we can do. Amen. Amen. Just trust us. So thank you again, Minister Janae Fontaine from Salisbury, Maryland. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Oh my oh, goodness. Girl. Girl. <sighs> so our next live is when, Elder? When, when Lydia? April the 20th at 7 p.m. And our guest will be Bishop Tony White, who will come on and share his testimony with us. We got to mix it up. We got some ladies. We got some men. We're going to have some couples. We're going to have some couples come on. So invite yes. your friends. It's not all girly girls. It will be for the brethren. It will be for the couples. It will be, you yes. know, a good mix of everybody. For the body. Yes, for the yes. body. The body. For the body. Yes. 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 And once again, if you want to be a guest, inbox us. Inbox yeah. us on the page. Inbox me or inbox Lydia. Let us know. We will set it up so that you can come on as our schedule. You know, we're trying to fill our schedule up. 
you know, ahead of time. So just let us know and we'll yeah. bring you on because I'm yeah. sure there's some awesome testimonies out there waiting to be given. And we're going to have to have Jeanette come back because I'm pretty sure oh. there's a whole lot more oh. in her. Oh, give. She said she thought she was done. Hi, ah, did you catch that? She said, oh. Yeah. Look. Yeah, we're going to bring you back, sis. <laughs> I think we're having some technical difficulties. Can you hear me? No. No, you 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 know how we used to do wait a minute, sidebar. Remember how we used to get on the table like uh um uh cut You tried it. You tried it. But I see you though, but I see you. <laughs> oh let me cut the camera off right this. Oh gosh. Love it, love it. <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, we want to thank you for joining this second episode of And That's the Kind of God We Serve. We pray you were encouraged. And please share your testimony. Don't be scared. God allowed you to live through it for a reason, to tell his yes. goodness and make his deeds known else. over the whole world. They all need to know how good he is. Yes. So we'll yes. see you guys on April the 20th, 7 p.m. Hope, I don't know. We'll see where we are if we're in the same space if we can be in the same space but if not <laughs> either way we're gonna be on if not yeah. this is cool i mean this is cool and it may work better for people that you have on if they can meet from their home so you yeah. know just throwing that out there for the peeps you know peeps, that's yes. right you yes can i don't mind them being at their home but i want me and lydia to be together i don't oh. know I don't <laughs> mind, but that's your heart. it still works either way yes <laughs> yes so good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Please share the video so people can watch the uh, replay so they can be blessed by everything that we heard on tonight. We love you guys. And thank you for love supporting you. us. Thank you, Janae, thank again. Thank you, Janae. Thank you. Thank love you all. Bye. 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 <laughs> Amen. So if you want to stop the... Yeah.